we are able to get a little bit closer for you. And so right here behind us is what used to be the old McClung Lumber Building. <laughs> Ready to rev your engines because the Roanoke Valley Mustang Car Show is this weekend. What's part of the roof is now lying right here in the front yard of this house, along with other fragments of the house. Tony Polston Jr. and a gas station employee who is 64 year old Randall Lee Paxton got into an argument inside the farm and fuel gas station on Allegheny Avenue in Covington. The rail yard dogs are back in Roanoke and we'll introduce you to some of the players you'll see on the ice. One person is dead after a vehicle crash on Williamson Road. I'm going to step out of the way so you can get a better look at the scene. All righty. Ooh, and I'm joined here with Alex to tell us all about it. So, Alex, I just finished this off. Uh, yep. Can you kind of walk our viewers through a little bit of what they can experience here? No cars moving on 81 North because of this tractor trailer crash right here behind us. Again, this is right before the 581 exit into Roanoke. That is kind of some thick ice there on that parking lot. So you're going to want to watch out for that. And then also just on those roads, the main roads, 81, 581, they were pretty good getting down here. Roanoke City Police responded to their home right here behind me on Elm Avenue for reports of shots fired. Forget the drive through this year. Get out of your car, get your costumes, and have fun walking around our 10 different candy booths. We're following breaking news this morning after a tractor trailer carrying diesel fuel crash on I-81 North. Now, if you take a look over here, we're right off of exit 162 where traffic is being detoured. This meeting is to discuss the governor's new executive order, which takes place starting this morning. And this is regarding masks in schools. I'm going to pass you my microphone. I don't want to get that wet. We've been tracking severe storm damage all morning long here in Carroll County. We are on Lanesboro Road where this house right here behind me is completely destroyed from the storm. You can see that roof is ripped off and what's part of the roof is now lying right here in the front yard of this house along with other fragments of the house. You can see a pillow from the couch right here as well and a welcome sign all lying in the front yard. If you take a look behind me, there is a truck and a tree just fell right on top of that pickup truck. Now we did speak to neighbors about out this scary scene and they said they were home at the time of the storm but their house started shaking and that is what woke them up and even though their house is right across the street from this one it's okay we just almost got sucked out of the house which you you can see by the damage they slept upstairs so Dustin said it just he thought it was going to pull him out but he he was on top of his wife and his little girl you know so, uh, main thing is we all we all made it through it. The neighbors here told us that the residents of this home are okay. They are at a shelter right now. Now, all morning long, we've seen VDOT crews and state police going back and forth on the road assessing that damage. Now, we do want to point out to you, though, that Gladesboro Elementary School is closed for the day, along with local bus services. They are not running because of this storm. Now, we will keep you updated online at WSLS.com. Reporting live in Carroll County, Brittany Weir, 10 News, working for you. One person is dead and two firefighters are hurt after an early morning fire on Albemarle Avenue in southwest Roanoke. 10 News reporter Brittany Weir spoke with neighbors and crews on the scene with a look into what happened. Just heard like tons and tons of sirens going off. Dasha Larson woke up to a different kind of alarm this morning in the 400 block of Admiral Avenue. Just before 6 a.m., he and his fellow neighbors shocked at the sight of Roanoke Fire and EMS fighting a house fire at the home you see here. And I didn't think it was right over here. Like, this is just walking distance from my house, and it's pretty crazy. And then I walked out, and I count like 22 cars out here. Due to the amount of smoke and heavy fire conditions, crews upgraded it to a second alarm. Crews got on scene, um, found uh, heavy smoke and flames uh, coming from the residents, uh, started a fire attack and actually ended up uh, requesting a second alarm. According to Roanoke Fire and EMS, three people were home at the time of the fire, but sadly only two people made it out alive. 
and I think we did participate in rescuing one of them, one of whom has been transported to the hospital. And then unfortunately, um, we had identified a victim inside who was deceased. The fire so intense, a dog also died and two firefighters suffered from non life threatening injuries. Officials are still investigating what started this fire, but they say the home might not have contained smoke alarms. Roanoke Fire and EMS want to urge everyone to check their smoke alarms. And if you're a resident of Roanoke City and you're not sure how to do so, all you have to do is give crews a call and they'll show up to your home and check your alarms for you. They'll even replace the batteries. Reporting in Roanoke, Brittany Weir, 10 News, working for you. New this morning, it is a big birthday weekend for a World War II veteran. He's turning 103. Just incredible. And 10 News reporter Brittany Weir is working for you on how you can help mark the occasion. And this is a special occasion indeed. Yes, yeah, very special. And what's cool about it is that everyone can get involved and help out. So what started out as a social media post uh, for this man right here grew into a nationwide birthday celebration. So Orland Phillips from Willis, Virginia turns 100 103 on Saturday and one of his favorite parts of his birthday is the cards. What have I got here? 103, an age not many of us expect to see. Growing older is mandatory. <laughs> to celebrate, Orland's daughter posted on social media asking the community to send him birthday cards. Well, we've done it a couple years before and had pretty good response, but this year we decided 103 would really be a good idea to get 103 cards. That social media post was shared over 500 times, and those 103 cards quickly grew to over 1,000. I don't know what to think about it. I'll let me card. I've been working on it, reading. I've been reading every one of them. <laughs> that don't look like a front to me. <laughs> <laughs> the Army veteran served as a machinist in World War II on the Pacific Front. So a lot of his birthday cards say, Wishing you all the best and thank you for your service. After this has happened, anytime we see anybody that's older, we'll definitely send them a card. We've seen requests before. This means so much that yeah. We'll definitely do that in the future. Orland now has homemade cards from local second graders. Well, it's, a, it's a good pastime. <laughs> I'm glad to see him. He receives a stack of cards each day and pays attention to where they all come from. So far, he has cards from 45 different states. Brookfield, Wisconsin. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> His family has a book writing down who sent the cards and from where. His message to everyone sending cards? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Orland is missing birthday cards from Rhode Island, North Dakota, South Dakota, Alaska and Vermont. But I have a feeling he'll be getting some from Vermont very soon. Uh, we have the address on our website at WSLS.com. If you want to send him one, he also told me that he plans on celebrating his big birthday by getting pizza. <laughs> Pretty weird. 10 News working for you. New this morning, some weddings don't need to include a big dress, hundreds of people, and a breathtaking venue. All that matters is the person standing next to you. 10 News reporter Brittany Weir shares the story of a quick wedding filled with a lot of love. We just sort of walked right in through those side doors there. Um, our officiant was already here as well as our little wedding party. And about two minutes later, that's when we got married. A short moment that will last a lifetime between two women who have been together for over a decade. We've lived together for a long time. We've seen each other like through every single stage of, of growing up. 12 years to be exact. The spark between Katherine Abrams and Molly Ryan happened when they were children. When I was in like middle school, early high school, I started getting really into dressage, which is the sport that we do. Um, Catherine was really the only other like kid at the farm who was interested in dressage. Everyone else wanted to do a different sport. So that's when we started spending like a lot of time together, which makes it even more fitting that they got married at the dressage at the Virginia Horse Center in Lexington by their friend and fellow trainer Lauren. And I was teaching lessons about a week before the, the summer show here. And she texted me and was like, do you think Lauren will be there? And I was like, I probably and she was like, do you think she would legitimately marry us? <laughs> so I texted Lauren about that and she immediately was like, oh yeah, I would definitely marry you. <laughs>
But never did they imagine their wedding ceremony would play out like it did among the horses and the stalls. She asked if we were ready, and we said we were ready, and that, then she, she did the ceremony, and that was it, about two minutes. The couple got engaged in April. Originally, they were planning on a longer engagement, but with the fear of possible changes being made in the Supreme Court, Catherine and Molly decided it would be better to get married sooner rather than later. So they had a total of nine days to plan their wedding. Shortly after Roe fell, um, and I texted her and I said, what do you think about next week? Um, <laughs> and I didn't know what she was going to say. I thought she would be like, you're crazy. There's no way we can do that. Um, <laughs> but she agreed. And so that's how it started to come into motion. Even though nothing has been determined yet, like so many others in the LGBTQ plus community, the newlyweds were worried. Obviously with the political climate sort of breaking down a little bit, like we were feeling like things were getting more polarized. Um, and then with the end of the Supreme Court term, we got a little bit concerned, of course, about the future. However, just as quickly as things started to change in the Supreme Court, the decision to get married was just as quick, but just as special. I was thinking about the anniversaries, like that's kind of fun, that is always at the show too. Catherine and Molly wanted to share their story because they wanted to show that queer people can have a happy ending too. We're just two people who fell in love um, and are lucky to have a really beautiful love story. And even though Catherine and Molly got married pretty quick, something that made the day extra special is both of their parents were able to be there. Aww, um, so they were very happy about that. Yes, for it to be like, you said nine days, right? Nine days, so. yes. That was a quick turnaround. Yeah, <laughs> quick for sure. turnaround for that wedding. Uh, but like I said, so many little special moments there for them that they'll never forget. Thank you, Justin. And new details in the Idaho murder mystery where four college roommates were killed last month. For the first time, we're hearing from two roommates who were also in the house that night. Steve Patterson shares what they had to say and the push coming from parents desperate for answers. A North Carolina county is under a state of emergency this morning. Police say someone shot two power substations in Moore County, causing a mass power outage. This morning, more than 35,000 are without power. Duke Energy says it could take days to get everyone back online. The company says crews are seeing multiple equipment failures at the substations, and authorities say this was a targeted incident and not random. So far, there has been no arrest. In our next half hour on Virginia Today, the FBI now stepping in to investigate what they're learning this morning coming up at 6.30. And starting at 7 tonight, road work along I-81 will significantly impact drivers. VDOT says the right southbound lane near Salem is set to close so crews can repair the bridge over Goodwin Avenue that was hit by a tractor trailer. That's in the middle of an already established work zone for the widening project between exit 137 and 141. Crews say the lane likely won't reopen until Thursday morning, but that will also depend on the forecast. And happening tonight, Roanoke County is inviting the community to join together to begin the holiday season. They're hosting their ceremonial Christmas tree lighting. The holiday fun will take place at South County Library. This year's theme is Christmas classics. It will feature entertainment, crafts, treats, and activities for the whole family to enjoy. Well, the night kicks off with the ceremonial tree lighting at 630, and then Christmas carols performed by students from Oak Grove Elementary School. Not only will you see the annual Christmas tree light, um, but you'll also see um, marshmallow roasting. We'll have a cakewalk, and then we'll also have uh, children's crafts, scene activities inside. We'll have the Cave Spring High School Jazz Band will be inside in the auditorium playing some holiday favorites. A lot of fun to be had tonight. Well, the most magical moment of the night? Well, that will be when Santa comes to visit. He will arrive by fire truck and visit with children to hear what they want for Christmas. So many fun things. We got to make sure we're on the nice list. This yeah, I year, know. Right? I know. We're going to work on that. We still Santa. have time. Exactly. So you can find a full list on our website uh, of holiday events across Southwest and Central Virginia. Just head to WSLS.com. All right, it's 6-11 this morning. Coming up, we set out cookies and milk for Santa, but what about our delivery drivers? We're going to tell you about the act of kindness that was caught on camera. And new at 645, a Virginia teen looking for a family to support and encourage his dreams.
I describe a family as um, where they take care of each other, love each other, help each other out when they need help. Coming up, we continue our mission to find homes for the more than 700 children ready to be adopted here in Virginia.